and 60 minutes taking you through the world of mule and donkey questions being answered. And Steve himself has got a, a disappearing mug. Steve, why don't you bring it up there? Get that. Oh, 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 oh this one here? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, oh wait a minute. There, yeah, there it is right there. One of yeah. a kind. Can't buy that yeah. on Amazon. He's no. not going to put it up on eBay. One of a kind. It is the Moose Mug. And that is a favorite in the Edwards household. How's everybody doing this morning? Hope you all are enjoying your Wednesday. We're only going to get one of them, uh, at least one more in October 2020. Heck, there's probably plenty of people who say, it. Ah, good riddance. Let's get on to 2021. Well, folks, yeah. I got good news and I got bad news. 2021 offers a brand new perspective opportunity on life, but just switching from December 31st to January 1, that does not change things. So what are we going to do? We're going to do everything that we can today to make sure that you have the tools you need to change things in your mule and donkey training. So as 2021 comes around the corner, you are prepared to lasso it, pull it down to the ground, Get it into submission, get it back up, mount it, and ride 2021 off into the sunset. How about that for an introduction, Steve? Well, <laughs> that sounds like what we used to do. Throw them on the ground and uh, throw a blindfold on them. When they got up, boom, away we went. You know, yeah. But it wasn't always a good ride. Yeah. I remember you telling me all those stories. Well, folks, uh, uh, like I said, this is Steve Edwards, and my name is Dave. And for the next 60 minutes, we're going to answer answer as many questions as we can. I've got a few here that folks have sent in over the last week. And uh, really, we're going to be leaning on y'all for the direction of the show today. So if this is your first time ever watching us, welcome. We are grateful that you are here spending time with us. Uh, we ask... Um, Three things. Number one, uh, that you put your name in the comment section. Uh, let us know where you're watching from and what the weather is like there. That would be fantastic. Number two, any and every question you got, go ahead and ask them early and ask them often. That way we can make sure to get through them and we don't leave anyone hanging by the time the broadcast is over. And then uh, number three, you share the broadcast. That is how we get this broadcast in front of the people who need it the most. Matter of fact, uh, really the mule and donkey conversation has come on strong in the last 10 years. Prior to that, it was just pockets of the equine yep. world. And so now you've got a lot of folks who have just spent their entire life with horses starting to take a look at mules and donkeys. And there's a lot right. that they know about the mule, about the, the horse. And they just automatically assume that it carries over to the mule and donkey. And maybe there's a few things. They have legs. They've got a nose. They've got a mane. You can ride them. Um, you can have a lot of fun owning one, but that's about where a lot of the similarities end. There's a lot going on underneath the skin and in between the ears that you need to know if you want to experience happiness, owning a mule, happiness, owning a donkey. So let's get to introducing every or welcoming everyone here. We've got Linda watching Linda, the mule servant and Theo, the sweet one eyed mule from damp, chilly, dreary, rural, central Ohio. We've got Ooh. Eileen watching. Hello, everyone. Partly sunny and 45 degrees here in Trumpville. There we go. Big election Trump coming up. Trumpville. That's what she says. Trumpville. Yeah, that must be Ohio. There we go. Uh, then we've got Linda uh, saying, got my mule riders martingale today. Thank you. Now, Steve, real quick, we were talking a little bit earlier today with one of your customers, and uh, she was asking questions about the saddle and whatnot. And at the very end, we, we talked about the saddle and the design, but at the very end, you had said, hey, Really, the proof is in the pudding, the comments that people send in. What are some of the comments that you hear from folks when they get that Mule Riders Martingale, when they get that brand new saddle? Well, I just got an email this morning from one of my clients five years ago. And she says, Steve, I want to thank you so much. She says, uh, I'm going to be uh, telling you that five years ago, I was done with my mule. I was going to find another home. We're done. And, uh, and, and you called and you said, do this. And then you called and said, do that. And then I called you and back and forth. She says, now five years later, Steve, I have the most perfect meal. I, I wished I had a husband as good as this meal was. Woo! <laughs> 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 yeah. So she wanted to come here and visit me. I said, no, if I'm married, you know, that's it. <laughs> no, she was coming down to have some sunshine. And I said, you know, I'm going to be out of town when you, when you showed up, but that happens a lot. But yeah, and, and that and more, um, 
I had uh, I had a guy call me and said, "Hey, uh, can't stop my mule. That it, 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 it's it was one of them butt mules. Yeah, you know, I was, yep. see a few butt mules. He said, "Man, Steve, this beautiful mule does this and does that, but." And I, I thought, all right, here it comes. He says, I can't stop it. And I, I said to myself, well, why in the world are you on it? He says he put his wife on it first. <laughs> oh, what a, what a guy. <laughs> yeah, what a guy. Yeah, if you don't throw the wife, I'll be all right. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so it goes on. I mean, it really does. Uh, people, uh, at first, when they bring it out of the box and they look at it, I can imagine Linda looking at it going, um, uh, hey, uh, one eye mule, take a look, tell me how to do this. <laughs> and I'm sure the mule would say, Oh, I, it's easy. I have one Steve Edwards, we can do it. You know, but it, it does work, folks. It here's the problem, Dave. This is the major problem is we see it instant fixed on TV and instant fixed on this, that, and the other. There is no instant fix in the mule and donkey world. Uh, if you, if you want to try some instant fixes, Try to fix 32 broken bones and two replaced hips from, from being done. And if you want to reinvent the wheel, do it. But here's the deal. That martingale, it's like I had a client call me the other day. Said, Steve, I, I can't stop this mule. This is another guy that didn't have his wife on, but he was on. And I said, you can't stop it. I said, well, you're using a horse bit. He said, nope, I'm using your bit. I said, all right, which bit? And he said, the trail rider bit. And I said, all right, tell me what you did. He says, well, he says, all of a sudden, don't know why, the mule just took out running, took out running. He says, I tried to stop it, so I ran him into a tree, and I got him stopped. I said, you run him into a tree? He says, yeah, I got him stopped. I said, okay. Uh, I said, now, what else did you try? He says, well, he says, I was riding with a bunch of guys uh, just yesterday, and all of a sudden, the mule took off running. He said, there wasn't no trees around, so I ran it right into a guy on his horse. <laughs> Knocked the guy off of the horse, but, you know, we got him stopped. And I said, you know, those two things don't really work. Right. I said, uh, and, and, and he says, well, I usually pull him around in a circle, but I couldn't pull him. And I said, yeah, that's right. You know, uh, folks, this is a mule. They run through their shoulders. You don't disengage hindquarters. You disengage the shoulder. You learn how to disengage your shoulders. So here's the deal, okay? Here's the deal. He's using the wrong bit to train with. He says, well, I figured I'd just go right to this bit and everything will be fine. No, 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 no. Steps. Here is the steps. Steve's giving them to you for free. How much free stuff we got out there, Dave? So much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Free because we want you to get it. Yeah. Get it. All right. Now, here's the deal. I said, I said, go back to the Mule Riders Martingale and use that. Do what it says on the ground. Now, here's the deal with the Mule Riders Martingale. Dave, you ready for this? I put Born the surf single on this mule. Her name is Babe. Good-looking black mule. I mean, she's a dandy. I trained this mule from day one. A client of mine had it, and as per usual, pull too much on Babe. Babe grabs a hold of the bit. And babe now has control. So now... She brings her back to me, and I take Babe, put the Mule Riders Martingale on her, put the Sir single on, and all of you all that have the Mule Riders Martingale, you know this next picture. I turn her loose, and I take my camera. That was the days where I had that big monster camera, you know, and I'm videoing around like this, videoing this mule going around. First, this mule's throwing his head in the air, and he's really being nasty. Now, remember, nobody's on this mule's back. That's important to remember. Nobody's touching the reins. Nothing's happening. The only thing that's happening is the reins are tied back to the sur single and they're hanging loose, not tight, loose, so that the bit is working. Folks, when you're holding on to that bit all the time, you're not allowing the bit to work. Let go of it. Let it be loose. Right, Dave? You experienced that. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let it be loose. All right. So now here you see it. Here's a mule going around. Nobody on his back. All of a sudden, you see the mule starting to drop his head, starting to drop his head, still going. He's choosing to, she, she is choosing to go off fast. Okay, go off fast. That's okay, you know. I'd rather have you go off to a walk, but you chose to go off fast. So she's going off fast. Now she's starting to drop her head, get her nose on the vertical. She wants to slow down. I said, oh, no, no, no. 
You chose to take off. I'm going to agree with you. So I'm going to get out of here. Get, 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 get. And I made her go on. And she's throwing her ear at me saying, come on, Steve, let's talk about this. You know, and she's, she was trained by me years ago. And she's throwing her right ear, telling me with the right brain, let's talk. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Go on. You want to walk? I mean, you want to trot and run? Uh -huh. Go. And then I stepped over by her nose. Went to her shoulder. She settled right down, went into a walk. And you could see her, nobody on her back, nose on the vertical, head down. The bit was doing the job. Folks, the, it's not the bit. It's your hands. Oh, I got soft hands. No, no, no. If you have that bit up too high, creating one wrinkle or two wrinkles, it, you don't have soft hands. Okay? You, you got to let that bit hang down. Let them pick up the bit and pack it. And then here's the next thing. Keep your hands down low. And I've got some videos there that will help you out. But that's just a one, one, one thought there, Dave. Throw, throw it out there. I grabbed a whole bunch of. Hey, things. we're picking up what you're putting down. You're throwing it out. We're scooping it right back up there. So very good. Folks, get, uh, get your questions in because Steve will answer them and he will be thorough. So there you go. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Marcus watching. we got Roger in New York. Thank you, Steve. My wife loves the saddle. We've got uh, Marcus says Saras Saratoga Springs, New York, cloud and cloudy and cold. Laura is watching from Ontario. Gone international. Got our first snow yesterday. Cloudy and around 40. Oh, she's got the crying emoji. Crowdy cloudy and about 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit today. Planning to blanket my mule as he was imported from Ohio this summer, and our winters are much colder here. Hoping next winter he can adjust his coat to our climate right there. Good for Any you. comments on that? Is that the way to do it? No, that's, I mean, that's good for, for, that's a good idea and all. Dave, when I used to go up to Montana, when it'd be 20 below and yeah. hunting and sort of thing, I thought, oh, I'll I blanket up my mules. I'm really going to do them a good job. This was 15 years ago. And I look around at all these mules and horses, and they're not standing in the barn. They're standing outside. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. It's snowing. You've got a half an inch of snow across your back, you know, and yet you're standing out there, you know, and, and I watch them. They, they make, they, they get it done, you know, it's, and here in Arizona, 120 out there, 140 on the ground. And then mules are standing out there because the flies are in the barn and no, no flies out in the sunshine. <laughs> they know they know what they want and they know how to deal. Uh, let's see, Alicia's watching. Hey, from Colorado, it is freezing here. My first question is, do you blank, blanket a mammoth? Yes or no, why or why not? Also love the hat, Steve. There we go. We got thank a, you, we got a Trump comment. Um, yeah. Steve, so uh, do you blanket a mammoth? We were just talking about that. Is there any difference between a mammoth and a normal? Not, not really. Not a mammoth is a uh, is a donkey uh, that is uh, above fifty eight inches. All right, so that that's considered a mammoth. Uh, they're they're usually uh, really nice to ride and this sort of thing. Matter of fact, I've got a client in Kauai that just sent me a, a, a an email and sent me a picture of his really nice mammoth in there. But anyway, going back, folks. You know, there there are some times that, yes, it's nice to have a blanket. I can tell you one time, Stacy, my wife's mule that we took hunting, uh, one time she was really shivering. And I've never seen her shiver before. We was up in Colorado. And I took a blanket out and threw it on her. It made all the difference in the world. Put her underneath the tree as well. You know, did it make a difference? Yeah. And I also put her inside the tree. You want to be yeah, out with their buddies, but anyway, but yes, you know, go ahead and blanket them up. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, a good solid blanket that does that will that will run moisture off. You know, you betcha. Uh, the best thing you can do, folks, is to have them a tree by where they can stand underneath it, or have them a little shed to crawl inside of. You know, that's that's one of the best things. There you go. Uh, we've got Patricia watching from uh, Central British Columbia. Rain and sleet minus one degree Celsius. Hope it's better Ooh. where you are. And it is, Patricia. Hey, matter of fact, Patricia and everybody else, listen. How about getting uh, first weekend in March on your calendar? Come down here to Arizona and spend a little bit of time with Steve Edwards. I'll, I'll be there, too. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be, do some video recording. We can have lunch together. It'd be good. We'll get more details out there. But, uh, First weekend in March. Go ahead. Put that in your calendar. And as soon yeah. as the details 
emerge, you will be ready to roll. Let's see. We've got Bill watching from Mules of Sharing to Mules of Ohio. Forty. Thank you, Bill. Sharing uh, 49 degrees, cloudy and rainy. We've got Jolene over on YouTube watching from Kentucky, cloudy and cool. D. Witt is watching. D and Cotton in Camp Verde. Anyone else have a mule or a donkey wanting to go real fast down? downhills do they want to do that do they like going downhill steve do they want to go fast downhill uh no they don't it's extremely dangerous but why are they doing it okay so is she riding a breaching first question okay uh that would be my number one thing breaching crouper what is she riding in that's that's that all right now the next thing why are they running downhill because the saddle is hitting the scapula bang 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 so the sooner they get down off of that hill the sooner they don't have the scapula banging on them. Now, folks, look at this. When you put your breeching on your mule and you adjust your saddle and everything's just the way Steve showed you on the mule uh, saddle fit videos, just the way I showed you, okay? And, and you've done it all that way. You're thinking, boy, all right, I got her made now. There we go. And you go up this mountain. Boy, you're just climbing up this mountain. You're doing good. You get to the top. Well, now you got to go down the mountain on the other side. So you start going down the mountain, all of a sudden your mule takes off running. Why? Wait a minute. I got the Steve Edwards saddle. I got the Steve Edwards breaching. I got the Steve Edwards pad. I don't have Steve Edwards here, but why is my mule running downhill? We know why, folks. This is why. When you got to the top of that mountain and you look down, guess what? That mountain is steep. When you go down that mountain, your mule is going to go from being, I'm hypothetical figures here now, it's going to be going from five foot long to four and a half foot long. Why is that? Because they get their back legs up underneath them and they're going down that steep hill. Dave, that's why I ride a mule, because I can tell by their ears, the gauge by their ears, how steep of a mountain. And when I only see a half an inch of ear, I know it's really a steep mountain. Okay, so let's go back. Aha, joke. Anyway, so going down that hill, now that saddle is beating on that scapula. Why is that? You didn't adjust the breaching to the four and a half foot wide mule going off the side of that mountain. Get off, loosen up your cinches, let them hang, pull your breaching up over top of your cannon, pick up the back of the saddle and move it up and down. Let some cool air go in there. Let some cool air go. Okay. Sit there for a minute, take a good deep breath of air, get you, make yourself a cup of coffee, you know, kick back a minute, and then take and put your cinches up, put your breaching down, snug up your front cinch, snug up your back cinch, and then adjust your breaching down, where that mule has to sit on that breaching to hold that saddle back. Okay, now once you do that, then go back and step your mule off a time or two, just a nice little circle, a little five foot circle or so, depending on how much room you got, and then tighten up the, the back cinch again. Leave the front one alone. Walk your mule in a little 10 foot circle again. That loosens everything up, folks. That makes that cinch feel better, makes that tighter breaching feels better because they can move around and things. It's kind of like getting on your Levi jeans in the morning. <laughs> you know what that's like. You're trying to snuggle up in there and get it done, finally get the button done. Yeah, it's, I call it the Levi dance, you know, Wrangler dance. And also, you see folks do it just before they get ready to get the saddle. You know, girls are really bad about it. Oh, yeah, they pull it all up there. They, they get their foot up in the stirrup, tie it. Yep. Yeah, boy. Okay, you do the same thing to your mule, folks. Okay, so now I move my mule around again. He feels the breaching. He feels the rear cinch. Now I just snug up the front cinch. Barely, I barely want it to touch for me. Now you may go, oh, I don't know, and you may tighten it up a little bit more, and it may cause you some problems doing that. Okay, now get this. That back cinch is the most important cinch. Most important part of your saddle. It is what keeps the saddle into place, not the breaching, folks. All the breaching does is balance the saddle. You've got a strap on the right, a strap on the left, and two across the back. The strap on the right, strap on the left, keeps the saddle from going left to right. 
the two across the back helps keeps the saddle from going forward. So when those are adjusted correctly, according to your terrain, do not leave the breaching in the same place all the time. Well, Steve, that's a lot of work it's, uh, to do that. I said, yeah. Do you want a sound mule? Do you want a sound donkey? It takes things like that to make it work. Okay. Will you get white hairs? Oh, yeah. Even as good as I have been trying to do in this sort of thing, I have gotten some white hairs once in a while. But here's the deal. They're only salt and pepper, so they're just little white hairs here and there. No big deal. They will go away. I had a rancher just call me yesterday from Colorado. Hey, Steve, I got some white hairs. And uh, I said, okay, they're right in behind the scapula. He said, yes. You know? And I said, they're just salt and pepper. He said, yes. I said, it's a hot, sultry day. And you scalded, no big deal, you know. I said, I said, did you adjust your breaching? No, I didn't. I said, all right, here's the deal. Now that saddle, you're going downhill, and the front of that saddle is pushing down on that scapula area and stuff because you didn't adjust the breaching. Takes just a couple minutes, folks. Give your mule a break. Give you a break. It's the same thing. Think about this. You're going down a steep hill, pulling a big old trailer. You don't just put your brakes on like you're going up to a Sunday stop sign. You don't do that. You actually add a little bit more break, don't you? That's what your breaching does. It helps balance the saddle to keep it in place. What's that thing that keeps us close to the ground, Dave? Gravity? Yeah! Yeah! Gravity plays into place here. And when gravity plays into place, guess what? You're going forward, and you'll be like me years ago, grabbing for ears or something to keep from going forward, you know? So there you are. There we go. Oh. Folks, I was showing, while Steve was talking, the clips that you were seeing of demonstrating what he was talking about, uh, that's in the Mule Saddle training course, and you can get that at the <laughs> link I put in the comment section. So there's a lot of really great videos there. Uh, hundreds of folks have watched those videos and gotten help from them, and uh, uh, you can get that too. Just go to the link. It's free. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, Trisha watching from Wasilla, Alaska, cold and clear, 24 degrees. My brother's up in Anchorage, says they got some snow on the ground today. Couldn't decide if he was going to go out or stay in. It was one of those days, I think. Uh, David is watching from Washington. He says, Steve, did you get the elk? No. Nope. nope. They were all went nocturnal. We had cameras on them. The different, in, in a big, there's a big corral with a water tank in the middle. The only water within five miles. And the elk had gone in there like train tracks. It was so thick. Every night, we would, every morning we would check the cameras. That night, they would come in at 7 o'clock. Guess what time we left? Because it was dark. We couldn't see. Yeah. So we left at 6.15. Elk came in at 7 o'clock. They left at 4 o'clock. By the time we got in, bye-bye. Now, whoever was sending out a newsletter saying, Scatter, Steve's coming, I got to talk to you. <laughs> that was you, run and hide. Steve's coming for you. Let's yeah. see. We've got uh, Faye watching saying, good day. Good to have you here, Faye, taking us international again. Yolanda, hey, Yolanda, Netherlands. Man. Here, there's no sun, only storm, thunder, lightning, and torrential rains, hail, so no riding at all. You know what? I like it when it gets like that. But we never get it like that out here. No. And I imagine if it's like that often, you don't want it at all. So I hope it clears up for you there, Yolanda, and you can get out and ride before it gets too cold. Linda is watching, says, I have a yearling mule. She's had lots of ground training and is very good for the most part, but she is awful about her feet being trimmed. We've heard about that. I have your come along Bye. rope that I put on her when she's being trimmed. Good for you. But when her back feet are being done, she just pushes through my pressure. And today she knocked me down. Do you have any suggestions? I'm going to get that clip, Steve, of you picking up yep. the rear foot. But talk yep. while I'm doing that. Well, here's the deal, folks. When you think about picking up a back foot, what is the bone structure of that mule? The donkey. That hip is very narrow and and this sort of thing. And so when it comes down to their foot, I'd learned a long time ago that I bring the foot forward first. And as I'm bringing the foot forward, I feel the relaxation. If I feel it tense, I wait. When they relax, I go ahead and bring the foot forward. Folks, don't just, anytime you do this stuff, 
do everything with everything as if you were taking a picture. Every move a picture. Go slow and easy so that the donkey and the mule can figure it out. And even Steve can understand at that pace. Now, look, you bring it forward. As you're bringing it forward, the mule is going to get worried. You're going to have the come along hitch in your other hand, just like you're going to see in this video Dave's putting together for you. Now, when you feel them kicking at you, or push, actually they're trying to pull away, then go ahead and drop the foot, take that come along hitch, and I mean try to rip their nose off. Because here's the deal. You fell on the ground. You could have ended up paramedics coming out and us running an IV on you and running you in the hospital. No, 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 no. I don't want that. Okay? It's okay for the donkey or mule to bleed, folks. It's okay. It's not okay if I bleed or you bleed. It's not okay. So go ahead. I mean, get mad. Jerk, 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 jerk. Listen, if that was a mare horse that just got banged by a younger animal, she would spin and kick and bite. I mean, she'd make pieces out of that thing. So that little bit you're going to do with that come along hitch ain't going to be anything, folks, compared to what a mare horse is going to do. Nothing. Get that in your mind. You've got to get that in your mind. Oh, Steve, I don't dare. Yeah, you do. You better dare. Okay, folks, listen, there's, you don't want the broken bones that I've got, and, and we don't want her to end up. So let's go back. Then the foot goes forward, or I mean backward, 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 slow and easy, and then over to the left. Most folks pick it up like they do a horse, and they shouldn't even do a horse that way. They pick it straight up, and then it, then they go out to the right. Don't do that. Donkey bone structure. So you come forward with it. You go straight back and over to the left. The come along hitch tells the donkey, tells the mule, that that is an incorrect assumption that you're supposed to pull away. You see, they're thinking they're uncomfortable, and they are, okay? But they need to know that you are the herd leader, and if you bump on that lead rope, they better darn sure pay attention. Now, you watch this video, you know, that Dave's getting you there. You'll see it done. Can it be done? Yes. But here's the thing, folks. Your timing. Your timing, okay? Now, it could be that if I was you, I would have a helper right there with me. Okay, and just as soon as that donkey or mule went to jerking your foot really heavy, that helper is going to rip their nose off. Going to happen. Okay, I do it because I I don't want anybody around. I know how unsafe it can be, folks. There's no place around a mule or donkey that's safe. None. But it's up to you to, to make it safe. You. All right. There you are. Here we go. There we go. We got a question here. This one came in from Sharon. Now, I answered part of this question because it's one that um, we haven't heard so much recently, but about a year okay. and a half ago, we were getting a lot of questions, a lot of comments on this. Uh, so I wanted to bring it back up here. Steve, I purchased okay. one of your saddles, um, mm -hmm. the Trail Light. Purchased this particular saddle because I had fallen off of a mule and had to do a reverse total shoulder replacement. So I do ah. not want a major incident. Absolutely not. Yeah. So here are the issues that I'm having with this, um, this SAS level. Hope you can resolve. Number one, when I mount, the saddle slips sideways. Number two, when I'm on the mule, I'm constantly having to, re have to reset the saddle. Number three, my mule has a slight bolt and took off. I could have saved the situation, but the saddle slipped completely sideways and I fell off. Mm. And this is, this is where, where it, where I took note. I am at a loss for what to do with the situation. The cinches are tight. I ride with a crouper because well, where where I live, there is no reason for a britchin. Please help with this matter before I am seriously hurt again, mm. Sharon. Now, Steve, I, I saw that and I was like, I know exactly what this is because I know the purpose of the britchin. Go ahead and talk about this because we haven't discussed it in a little while. And and some folks, they they know that the crouper is great for riding if you don't have terrain. But with the mule and the donkey, it's it's different. Go ahead and talk to us. That's it. Okay. Is she got my saddle pad? I need to know about that. I, she didn't say, but, um, I believe I mentioned that inside of the comment, but either which way, go ahead. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. 
Okay, number one, if you get a chance, folks, you go to my website and see a guy by the name of Toby. Toby's like 320 pounds, and you'll see him next to me. I look like a, a little tiny kid in comparison to, to Toby. He's a huge man, huge man. And not really fat, folks. I mean, this guy's just a huge, solid man. And you can see him getting up and down in that saddle with no movement of the saddle. Okay, none. Why is that? He's got a breeching on, okay? The side straps on the breeching on the right and on the left. I was just talking about this. The right side breeching keeps the saddle from going to the left. The left side breeching keeps the going to the right. The two in the back keep the saddle from going forward. Adjusted properly, along with a properly adjusted breast collar, your saddle will stay in place. Now. Let me add one more clip to it. I want you all to turn your TVs tonight and watch grit. <laughs> all cowboy stuff. All old cowboy stuff. Gary Grant, you know, and, and Gene Autry, all them good guys, you know. Um, and watch them. Watch how they get in the saddle. They don't grab the cannel and, and the pommel and climb up. They don't do that. They get a hold of the horn. They get a hold of the mane. And they climb up. Folks, get this. When you grab the back of the saddle and you grab a hold of the pummel, you will pull it off. Hey, uh, just thought something, Dave. Yeah. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, that did the demonstration with, uh, with his donkey through the saddle. I'm showing it right now. Folks are able to see it right now. They're watching it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they're watching that video. I forgot his name. Anyway, look at him. Look at him. Look how, how he climbs in that saddle. Is it Eric? You know? Yeah, Eric. Yeah, Eric Palmer. Good guy. Good trainer. You know. So anyway, folks, listen. And the other thing is, the older we are, the the more muscle has left. Okay. Uh, I used to be all muscle myself. You know. But anyway. <laughs> I, I woke up one morning, my chest fell to my drawers, and that's what happens. All right, now get this in your mind, folks. We don't have the strength we used to have. So therefore, what I used to always do, I'd put my mule down in a low spot so that the stirrup, I'm 5'6", so it, you know, that stirrup's way up here, I can't do that. So I, put, I always kept them in a low spot, or I found a rock or a stump or something like that to climb in. That helped, and folks, that was when I was in better condition, too. And I was riding Bronx, so I'd have to cheat their head around, grab a hold of that horn, and get in. Did you hear me? Grab a hold of the horn. Grab a hold of the mane. That's how I got in. If I take and grab a hold of the candle and pull it over on a Bronx, I am going to hit the ground, folks. That Bronx doesn't know to stand still, okay? Doesn't know. The only thing he knows is, wait a minute, mountain lion's on my back, I'm out of here. Got to get that in your mind. So use a stepping stone. I, I, in my clinics, I used to teach them, teach the mules where it'd stand on top and click, and the mule would come right over to me and climb on. I do not like it when people lay down mules. That is that is so tough on these mules, folks. Uh, I'm by the way, Dave, I'm putting together something with a with a very famous veterinarian on this subject of laying them down. But anyway, it's another story. So there it is, folks. Uh, you know, I need to know if what the saddle pad, and also let's go back to the crouper. A crouper, folks, was designed for six to eight pounds. It was designed for harness. Now, get this. Here's your hip, and here's your hip plate up on top. That hip plate has to be between the point of the croup and the dock of the tail. Point of the croup, dock of the tail. That is on a saddle right here. When you're in harness, the hip safe goes up here, goes in front of the croup. That's because of the way the harness is designed. Now, if without a crouper on harness, the, the breaching climbs up the hip because of the wagon tongue moving up and down and moving around. That's what makes that breaching pull up the hip. So the crouper is there to keep the breaching from going up. Do not use a crouper, folks. 
Don't hurt your mule. Don't put him in harm's way. Now, I'm going to give you the last thing. I had one year, three people call me up. One guy says, I want you to put a crouper ring on your saddle. And I said, ain't going to happen. I ain't doing it. He says, he said, don't you want to sell a saddle? I said, no. It ain't important for me to sell you a saddle for you to put a crouper ring and do that wrong. I could care less. Folks, it's not important for me to, to destroy an animal. That's how, that's how I'm, I, I'm really emphatic about that. Now, listen. So he says, well, I said, once you buy the saddle, you do whatever you want to do. Go ahead. You know, so he bought the saddle. Another guy, wasn't a, wasn't a week later, called me up and says, I need a crouper ring put on. So I won't put a crouper ring. Ain't going to happen. Same thing. Oh, I've been doing this 15 years. Oh, okay, well, fine. You buy the saddle. But once you put a crouper on, ring on there, that, that guarantee is gone. No more warranty. Boom. Okay. Lady calls me up a couple days later. She raised this nice mule. Just got it back from the trainer. She says, I need your saddle. I need a crouper ring on it. I said, nope, ain't going to happen. Same thing. So she went ahead and bought the saddle. Now, it wasn't a month later, Dave. The first guy called me up, said, I wish I'd listened to you. He, that what happened was, is that crouper goes around the tail. All right? Goes around like this. And so it got sore. Yes, it will get sore. It's the softest place on the mule besides his nose. So he loosened it up. Now, we got the tail coming up in the air. The crouper pulls on the tail, and guess what? Broke his back. They had to put him down. Next guy called me within a couple days of that guy, put the mule down because he broke his back. And then the one that broke breaks my heart. Lady raised this mule from her colt, from her best mare. So she had the gestation time plus three years. She had to put it down because it broke its tail. Folks, what are you doing? Okay, I mean, you know, I, I mean, come on. You, you got this mule to, to enjoy life. And yet you want to make it hard on it. Oh, well, everybody else does it. Well, look, those are all horse folks that are in the mule world that are too lazy to adjust a breeching. That's the best way I can say to it. Oh, they all these excuses about a breeching. No, no, and no. Okay? If you care about your mule, you're going to put a breeching on it, and you're going to adjust things up correctly because that mule is dependent upon you to take care of it. Get rid of that crouper. Yep, yep. Can't I mean, be said enough because I know there's some folks here who are hearing it for the very first time. So we'll keep bringing it. We'll keep talking yeah. about it. Jennifer's watching. She says, howdy, Stephen Dave from Horseshoe Bend, Idaho. Sunny and 62. I'm doing my first 25-mile endurance race this weekend on my 18-year-old Applejack. What are your uh, thoughts on center fire rigging used with a britchin? P.S. I need that new ultralight saddle. My Ericsson fits, but so heavy. Get that ultralight saddle. Do it for you and your loved ones, including yeah. Applejack. Steve, what do you yeah. think about center fire rigging with Britchin? Uh, give us a, a short answer on what center fire rigging is and then answer the question there. Okay, so center fire is you have your two rings on your saddle, your front and your rear rings. So what people do then is they take a strap from the from the rear ring, a strap from the right ring, from the from the front ring, and it goes together down to the cinch, just like it's a V shape. Okay. okay. Now when they do that, they go to the center of the belly. No, folks, the back cinch is the most important one. By having that correct, you're not going to have the saddle do this, and that's what's happening now. Here's the next thing. I want you to tell me that you can climb in that saddle and not roll. It will roll, you know. And the farther you ride, the looser it's going to get. Yes, a breaching is going to help, but it is not going to keep the saddle in place because, folks, your rear cinch, the rear cinch is your most important cinch. Now, here's the thing. You'll see on my D-rings how close my D-rings are together. They are for a reason. That rear D-ring has to be at the sweet spot on that mule's belly. Important. You will see that the front cinch is at an angle. The rear cinch is straight up and down like it should be. Listen, folks, when that front cinch starts to pull the saddle forward, breaching or not, folks, that front cinch is pulling it forward. So that's why that back cinch has got to be the tightest. Front cinch be snug. And it'll work. And next thing is your breast collar. If you're using a horse breast collar, where it's tied in hard and fast, 
and they need to see my beta uh, demonstration with the with the breast collar. You might send send that out there to them, folks. I have people all the time say, Steve, I got your saddle. Just talked to a person just yesterday up in Carefree. I got your saddle, but it keeps moving. I looked at it. Yeah, they got my saddle, but it has a pulling collar on it. Now, in the video, the free saddle fit video, you'll see us talking about a pulling collar. And it brings the saddle forward, folks. It does, okay? And, 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 and it's extremely important, extremely important that you leave that thing off. You know, take a look at my breast collar. See how it works. Uh, and, and you'll see everything I design, folks, is not made by some saddle company. I found the saddle companies. I told them, here's my tree. Make it like this. My breast collars. Here's my breast collar. Make it like this. I didn't go to a company and they didn't come to me that said, well, I had a lot of them come to me, but I'm, that's another story. This stuff is what I designed learning from the mule. This lady has been rolled off a couple times. If she'd have watched my video, Dave, she'd have heard me say, no croupers. She, you know, I mean, she may have watched it and just listened to everybody else. And I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have judged her that way. But folks, I got a video that comes with it. We've also got the saddle fit video that's free that you can watch. Ten, was it 10 hours, Dave? Uh, it's, it's 13 videos and it's probably, <laughs> there's about 10, there's about, there's a lot more than 10 hours on YouTube. There's probably about three hours uh, of footage on the mule saddle training course. Okay. Well, there you are. So you got all that information folks before you buy the mule, before you buy my saddle or anybody else's arm yourself with the information. Here it is. Here is the end product, the end product product that's what we got to know that's and good. how does it end up you know i just had a guy dave yeah. they said hey we brought out this saddle fitter oh the saddle fitter and he's going to fit the saddle and 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 you know what your tree didn't hit every spot it was not touching in some places and i said yeah that's right it's not supposed to well what do you mean it's not supposed to you don't want that tree touching the whole body, especially up in the front on the scapula, okay? Especially on the side with all the fat pockets. Oh, we need to go a wider tree. No, you don't. When you go a wider tree, it gets out on those fat pockets, and then you end up crippling the mule. Hey, have I done that? Yes, I have. Have I crippled mules? Yes, I have. And folks, these were not mules that you guys raised from babies or that you bought from your grandmother's activity. These are mules that want to eat you. I mean, I was buying these mules for 25 bucks. Give you an idea, you know, 40 years ago. And we didn't care if we killed them. If we killed them, it's only 25 bucks. Okay, so they'd make it. If they made it, by golly, we did good. Okay, but that's the way we thought. Okay. Hey, am I lit up today, Dave? Is it too I, much coffee? Is that what I have? I don't, it, it might be that we're getting close to the first Tuesday of November. It could be the coffee. It could just be that you've had a good night's rest and you've got a lot of energy. But it's good. Keep bringing it because people like it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, folks, it is one of those deals. I, I said, Steve, hey, you know, here's the deal. As far as I can tell, as far as I see out there, uh, it seems like you've been talking about mules and donkeys for well close to 30 years here, anybody who would listen. And it mm -hmm. seems like just in the last 10 years, a lot of folks are starting to gather around and wanting to hear. And you got yeah. Steve saying, oh my goodness, I've been waiting for folks to talk to about mules and donkeys. Come on <laughs> around. Let me tell you all about them. And so folks are learning for the very first time. And, uh, and you know, I, I believe there's good folks out there who want to do good and just don't know what they need to know just yet about the mules and the donkeys, which is why what you said, Steve, ask questions, get the information. And that's why we love folks being here every single week. Donna is watching from Williams, Arizona. It's been cold here, but warmer today. My question, I have a young donkey who will be two in December. I've started to teach him to pony behind a horse and it's not going so great. He runs in front of the horse, tries to play, Bite Ooh. at the horse's face. Any advice this little guy does does lead very well. Loads in the trailer, approaches obstacles with confidence. But I think I'm still missing something. Is it is it not that the animal's missing something? Is it that 
Maybe he needs brain surgery? Could that be a thing? Is it just that he's young? Talk to me about that. I'm thinking some brain surgery would help, okay? What's brain surgery? Castration. Yes. It, is this mule, is this donkey, I mean, castrated? If not, uh, guess what he's doing? Hey, hey, sweetheart, how about we hubba hubba? Yes. Uh, and uh, and that, that ain't good when you're on a horse. No, having one climb up your back when they're trying to hubba hubba, not good. All right. Now, let's go back. Okay. It's it's come along hitch, come along hitch, come along hitch. Yeah, long hitch. When the come along work is done correctly in the saddle, as soon as you pick up on that come along rope, it will do the job. Now, folks, also got to remember that in the saddle and on the ground are two different places. Very much two different places. So now give this consideration. When you can do it on the ground with four foot of lead rope, then you'll be able to start applying yourself to eight foot of lead rope. And then you can climb up in a saddle with eight foot of lead rope and do it. If that donkey come around like that, your timing was off. And we have a donkey that has no respect for the halter, period. Okay, got that right? So uh, where were you at when I was elk hunting up there by Williams? Okay. So there you are. She needs my don't. She needs my ground foundation. Ground foundation. I sent that link out there, and um, uh, yeah, the brain surgery too. That was the first thing oh. I thought when she said he was that young and and uh, that energetic. So uh, we've got another question here. Oh yeah, Go. you got something? Well, I just was thinking, folks. Listen, your mules and donkeys grow mentally and physically until they're seven years old, especially the mental thing. Once they're three years old to three and a half. They usually have most of their height, most of their bone growth, okay? Will they get fat and sassy like you and I? Yeah, you know, that's right, exactly. Uh, but let's go back. You remember that mental state. Folks, when they are from one years old to two years old, that's the time to build a foundation with the halter. That's the time, okay? Not a, an ill-adjusted halter, uh, not a nylon halter, not chains. Start with a come along hitch, adjust a rope halter, make it work. Very good. Uh, we got a question from Dean here. And Steve, we've got quite a few questions uh, that have just come in. So we'll try and make these answers short so we can get to okay. all, hopefully get to answer all of them today. This one came from Dean. He emailed this in. I'm a new owner. Thanks. New mule owner. Thanks to my girl. We thought we were getting a trained mule, but there's that butt mule. But apparently, the previous owner carried treats around all the time. I, yeah. however, do not. My problem is when leading and lunging, he wants to eat constantly and sometimes won't even try to lunge. I have tried to be a bit aggressive with him in the past, and the result was him not wanting to come to me. And when I do catch him, he refuses to enter the round pen. I've recently earned his trust again and have been getting him in the round pen, but haven't had any luck with the eating and just some and just some luck with lunging. I live in Florida, so grass is always growing in the pen. I have even tried mowing it short. All of your videos also help. There you go. I have all of your videos also. Please help. Good for you. Okay. Number one, folks, uh, when he says lunging, is he talking about free lunging without a rope on the animal? That's different when you're round pinning them. Now, my next question is, why are you round pinning him? Why are you? Okay. You know, round pinning is not done like you do with a horse, like John Lyon's round pin reasoning. Okay. That's not it. You don't put a mule or a donkey in a round pen and run them around in a circle like you see John does. And he's a wonderful trainer. But folks, this is a mule, it's not a horse. Let's go back, okay? Let's go back. Okay, no reason to put one in a round pen unless he's hard to catch. Then I can do it. Or second reason is I'm going to be doing my foundation training from all the way from come along work up, okay? I do not lunge one from the ground with a lead rope going around like this. Don't do that. You make them run through their shoulder. You pull on the nose, the shoulder goes out. You will teach them to be more aggressive 
with running through the shoulder. That's where mules and donkeys get you, folks. They run through their shoulders. They don't run and using their hips. Now, they'll use their hips, but most folks try to pull up one rein and disengage the, the hindquarter, emergency stop, mule will run right through that. No problem, okay? So, so is he lunging with in the round pin going around holding the rope, or is he doing it free? I'd like to know about that. Very good. Just send him a message back. We'll see what he says. David Pingelli is watching. Sonoya, Georgia, Come Along Coffee. Folks, I'll put a link in the comment section. Get your Come Along Coffee from David oh, yeah. Pingelli. Uh, Patricia talking about the clinic says that will be fun. Patricia, it's going to be a blast. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna be fantastic. Steve is watching from Burns, Oregon. Uh, Faye is watching. Says we had a dangerous storm with the hail and the flying debris. My mini mules lost their shelters, so they they are sore and uncomfortable to, today. Should I fuss or should I just let them rest? Just let them rest. They'll they'll be just fine. Yeah, let them rest. There we go. Uh, Laura talking about the clinic coming up in March. I've already been scoping out some flights to Arizona in March. I don't have the heart to haul Buster Mule three to four days each way, but I am planning to be there and we will be glad to have y'all. Nick is watching. I'm in New Zealand, gone international and have a mammoth donkey, Jack. I'll be breeding with next year. Question, as a newborn mule, is there anything different to horses, I can different from horses that I can do to... Uh, blueprinting my baby mules cheers is that isn't there a book that we have that we refer people to well i like to put people toward dr uh, uh robert miller and he does uh imprinting and folks understand what imprinting is flight and fright is the number one thing that an equine uses to escape what they perceive is a problem so flight and fright can be something as simple as don't touch my ear. That's still flight and fright. Don't pick up my foot. That's still flight and fright. So the purpose of doing the babies like this is that you will teach them automatically that when the human touches them, who is a predator and they are the prey animal, when the human touches them, it's okay. I'm not going to eat your leg. It's okay. I'm not going to eat your ear. It's okay. I'm not going to eat your tail. They will see that. Here's the deal with flight and fright. Flight and fright. Ready? Okay. They got their back leg and their babies and they're doing this. Okay. And you're holding on to it because you can with a baby. And a split second that they get quiet, I let go. The split second. And then I build on that. I touch the ear. It pulls away. I touch it again. It pulls away. I touch it again. It doesn't pull away. I quit. That is breaking, that is not breaking, that is training the flight and fright preference of the mule donkey horse, okay? So yes, get, get Dr. Miller, Bob is a fantastic uh, a trainer. Uh, he was a veterinarian for years. He travels worldwide doing seminars and stuff. Bob Miller is, uh, he's, he is a, uh, I'll tell you, he's right up there with Tom Dorrance, uh, as far as, you know, being very knowledgeable with every aspect. And he's a mule man as well. There yeah. we go. Uh, Naomi's watching. Naomi, Naomi Ann Butch, 55, sunny in eastern Washington, on the way home from an eight-mile ride. Glad that you have us with you. Uh, yeah. Dee had a uh, question had about, a question the, about the Britchin. I went ahead and, uh, Dee, I put a link to the mule saddle training course. Watch the Britchin section in there. That'll answer your question. Uh, that's the, it'll be the video demonstration that you want to see. Uh, Jim is watching from Alabama over on YouTube, 75 degrees and stormy from hurricane winds, 50 miles per hour tonight. Stay Ooh, safe. Man. Rip is watching, says it's cold up here. Yeah, I'll bet it is Rip. <laughs> it's getting cold down here too. Chris is watching from South, uh, Mississippi watching this hurricane blow by. Yep. Stay safe there, Chris. Uh, Beth is watching from New Hampshire. Uh, David is in Kentucky, says rain, 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 calling for five inches by Friday morning. Stay safe. Enjoy the moisture. Hopefully it's not right. too much. John is watching in Iberia, Louisiana. Just dodged another hurricane. Good for you, John. Everyone stay safe. Howdy, y'all, says Andrea, North Carolina, rainy, 60 degrees. 
Uh, Rip says the farrier and vet have come have recommended barred front shoes. What do you think? And Steve, we've got about I mean, we can go over. We got about five minutes left here, but it, it, yeah. just mindful of the time. OK, so he says bar shoes. So in other words, what you usually see, folks, is the back of a shoe is open. And what they're going to do is they're actually going to put a bar from one branch to the other branch. And evidently, he, he must be having some some uh, problems there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure because bar shoes have a variety of uses. Uh, so I, I was talking about with Rip using pads and caulking and putting the pads on because I thought maybe soles were getting bruised. Mm. OK, now, if he's putting bar shoes on, I want to know the reason why. Are we talking about? Uh, 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 a lamina breakdown, the lamination breakdown. Are we talking about a rotated coffin bone? So, hey, Rip, let me know why they're putting bar shoes on there. Very good. Uh, let's see. Linda says, y'all make me so proud of my sweet Theo. When I finish with the front foot, he swings his back foot forward all by himself and uncocks his own <laughs> hip. Then I can step in and put my, his foot on my knee. Linda, you're just showing off now and we like Jeez, it. Up and out. We like yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Trace says, speaking of trimming, is it okay to rope the back hooves while trimming for security? Yeah. You know, folks, here's the deal. Yeah, I've done that, and I have I have actually tied a, a rope up to a guy on a saddle on a mule, or I've tied it to another tree, and I've done that. But I can also tell you, I know a couple people that got hung up between the rope rope and the and the mule, and it was ugly. And uh, I was kind of one of them people myself. And so I'd rather teach them personally to pick up the foot, like like Linda would just say him. Pick up the foot, give it to me, be nice and quiet, and go from there. If your meal is that rank that you got to tie up a foot, be prepared to go to the ER. Okay? Make the meal trustworthy, folks. It's not important to put a shoe on until they can pick up their foot nice and quiet. It's not even important to climb in the saddle until you can pick up all four feet nice and quiet. That's how important it is. Yep. You never graduate ground foundation training. Let's nope. see. Nope. Uh, uh, Greg is watching. Greg and Diane in St. Peter's, Missouri. Here's Missouri. 46, 46 degrees. degrees. Glad degrees. to have you guys here. LaDonna is watching from Joplin, Missouri. 42 degrees and rainy. Ola Lear is watching. Uh, let's see. Um, good to have you here. Chris is watching. The Britchin is a must in any situation from me. There you go, Chris. Keep that Britchin gospel out there and let people know the good news. Linda has the question with regards to runaways. If you are riding in a safe space like a large ring or fenced pasture and the mule runs off and you are not regaining control, what is your best option? Is an emergency dismount good? Is it better to stick in the saddle no matter what? And of course, the first thing that we talk about is left, right, left, right, left, right. And if they don't respect the halter, you shouldn't be in the saddle in the very first place because if you can't get them to respect the halter on the ground, they sure as heck ain't going to respect it when you're in the saddle. Steve, what would you say if uh, maybe you're doing that and it doesn't seem to work? Okay. Groundwork, 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 folks. Listen, running off is part of a mule's vocabulary, okay? Um, they, they perceive a problem and they run off. Like the one guy says, I ran into a tree, then I ran into a horse. Then I got him stopped. No, no. Folks, do your groundwork first. Get them if you get them to respect the halter first. Not that you're riding from, not that you're riding on a halter. Never want you to ride in a halter. Never. Okay. It's not safe because of a lot of reasons. And we can talk about that coming up here. Uh, anyway, going on to the next thing. Um, when it comes down to this, I don't dismount, folks. I've hit the ground and it hurts and it don't feel a bit good. Taken, okay, you got your helmet on. And first thing I would say to you is Mule Riders Martingale. Mule Riders Martingale. Now, when I was in Australia and I was judging the Mule and Donkey show, uh, Tracy was coming off of the hill and I was watching her come down. And all of a sudden, the mule took off running and she was riding in my Mule Riders Martingale. And I hollered out, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And, I, and she did that. And that mule hit, I mean, stopped right now. Got it done. Okay. So going back to this, okay? 
she probably did her groundwork. I'm sure she did. Okay. And, and so she was able to stop within a few short feet. Folks, get your groundwork done. Use that mule rider's martingale. Remember I was talking about babe in the very beginning here. Get them to respect the bridle. Listen, when you are training mule rider's martingale, it keeps the nose on the vertical and the head down. When you are using a regular snaffle bit, like I was talking with some folks yesterday, said my mule took off running. I said, all right, show me the bit. Sure enough, it was a smooth snaffle bit. Folks, you're not being nice to these mules using a smooth snaffle bit. You're teaching them to brace. Some of the worst mouths I've ever seen is when horse trainers have trained on a mule and they've cut the tongue or they beat up the bars or they cut up the corner of the mouth by using a smooth snaffle bit. They have no respect for them. So going back, go, go to your groundwork. Don't get in the saddle. Do your groundwork. Get that right first. The groundwork, folks, not only is going to teach your mule and your donkey to be respectful of the bridle and respectful of the of the rope halter and respectful of the come along hitch but also it's going to come down when you when when you pick up on this you're going to improve your timing mm -hmm. that's it folks this yeah <clears throat> when it comes down to it guess what's happening your timing using that rope halter using that that helps you with your timing Dismounting is not an option, you know. You you need to get your timing squared away before you get in the saddle. There you go. Uh let's see. We've got a we've got a few comments on your hat. They love your fashion. Uh you're starting some fashion trends here, Steve. Yeah. We've got Derek, we've got Wilhelm Mine, we've got uh uh Warren and we've got Karen. They all love your hat. They say you've got good taste is what they're saying. You ought to uh, see my mask. There you go. That's right. Steve doesn't have the mask right here. Uh, he's uh, he's he. You'll love his scent, his fashion sense and fashion style in masks as well. Uh, Bill is saying very interesting information on the Crouper. Thank you. Uh, we've got Richard Matthews. Good afternoon, Chaplain Steve and Dave. Hey, good afternoon, Captain. Appreciate that. Uh, Linda says, mask. "What's that?" Captain has one of my Trump masks. I got one at my house too. Uh, yeah, Linda says, my trail light saddle, beta britching, and breast collar all fit Theo like they were made just for him. If it weren't for the buckle impaired owner here, I'd be all set right now. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Cher is watching, says, hi, Steve. Hi, Dave. Blessings from Virginia. Cloudy here and expecting rain soon, 67 degrees. <laughs> Linda says, love the hyper caffeinated Steve and Dave show. All right, there we go. Uh, let's see. Keep on moving along. There you go. It's hyper caffeine. Uh, real quick, if you want to give a very quick follow up to Donna, she had the young animal who was trying to catch up to the horse. Says he's already cut, so he's already got the brain surgery. So I would imagine, okay. hey, you're good there. Just keep on with everything else we talked about. Come along here. Nancy, yep. Nancy is watching. Hello from Mountain City, Tennessee. Rain, rain, rain. I absolutely love to listen and learn from you, Steve. I still have not got my mule. Lord will provide in time, but until then, I want to learn. Nancy, you are a model. We will come back to you, and we will tell folks, be like Nancy. Uh, Donna says, awesome and thanks. Uh, we're here hoping to pack out elk, have the horses, now need the donkeys to mature and train. There you go, Donna. Get on it. Uh, Cher says, hi, Stephen, Dave. Another Cher just tuned in wondering if I missed the portion with my question that I sent in regarding uh, my mule that I am training. He is about to be gelded. You know what, Cher? I'll do that one right now. We hadn't gotten to that one. Yours is my last email question and we'll do it right now. Cher says, hello, Steve. Quick question for you. I am training a three-year-old stallion mini mule. He is set to be gelded in a couple of weeks at the ranch that I am training him at. He is not my mule, just mine to train to be adopted. The vet is supposedly coming to the ranch and take supposed to be coming to the ranch and taking care of the operation on the site outside in the paddock adjacent to his stall. This makes me sad for him, but the owner says he should be fine. I'm having great success with him in our training sessions, and he is really attached to me now after eight full weeks of training. If he were mine, I would leave him be yeah. and not have him gelded. What are your thoughts on gelding at three years old? How long of a recovery will it be for him? And when can I resume training? So thoughts on gelding, 
How long of a recovery? When can I resume training? Okay, number one, the most vicious animal in the world. Now get this in your mind, folks. Most vicious animal in the world is a stud donkey. They have no mind at all. They're horrible. You're doing okay right now until he decides that he wants to have a piece of you. And believe me, folks, I have seen it time and time and time again. I tried to train a stallion donkey 30 years ago, and I shot him. Now, I'm, I'm going to be blunt with you. That sucker one day turned on me and was going to, to yeah, you know, and he was bound to determine. His stinger was ready to go. And, and he was bound to determine he's going to hurt me. And that will happen. Listen, do not leave any of your donkeys or your mules intact. Geld them. It makes great brain surgery. They make great animals after that. But geld them. Okay, now, here's the deal. While this mule is under sedation and he's been gelded, that is the time not only he needs to walk to be able to help with the gelding, okay, but it's a good time to work with problems if you've got some little thing around there. But yes, gelding, never, ever leave a donkey or a mule intact. Now, a donkey, if you're going to use him for stud fees and he's, and he's, he's pretty decent, okay, you're going to use him for stud fees. That means you're not going to have him around people. Here's the problem, folks. I've seen donkeys, no, I've not seen, I know of donkeys that have knocked kids on the ground and tried to breed them. Now that makes, stick that in your mind. It's not a pretty thing. And I know about other things too, about ladies in the right times of the wrong times of the month and this sort of thing. And it can be a booger to have a donkey around that has breeding on his mind or a yeah. mule. There yep. you are. Arm yourself with yeah. information, y'all. You need to know. Yeah. Uh, share, Steve, give me a real quick few-second answer. What's the best remedy for thrush on a mini mule's feet? Uh, for, for one thing, dry. Put them in a dry area. Is, is, that's, the, that's the number one thing. They've never figured out yet completely what thrush really is. Bacteria, soul problem, or whatever. But what it amounts to, folks, is the hoof, the, the soul becomes powdery and so the downside of that folks is you've only got so much soul before you get to the coffin bone and the coffin bone when it starts rotating you've got he's crippled he's done so what do i do keep him in a dry dry area i use granite in my corrals and i have an area where they can be kind of up a little higher away from the moisture underneath you see you see these corrals back here that's my corral panels that's what they look like yeah it's 10 by 20 and the 10 foot wide and 20 foot long and half of that is under roof. You can see the rest of it's open. Now, two things, one urine and manure. When it comes down to donkeys, the problem is they got the worst hoof in the world. So all of that bacteria starts backing up inside that foot. Mm -hmm. And so all of it's laying there. So trim them short, trim them really short and use Clorox on them. And that's the best thing to use. But trim your donkey short, folks. Lamar's watching. Uh, hey, Steve and Dave, up in Price, Utah, shoeing my mule Miss Kitty two weeks ago. Got the rear hoof ready to put the shoe on and starting the nail, she jerked away a couple more times, then put on the come-along hitch. It took a lot of hard jerking. She then realized that hurt when she would try to uh, try me. Then she wouldn't let me pick up her hoof. She tried to kick at me. I took the slack on the come along rope, run it around the back of her hook, picked it up with ease, ended up getting her shoes on. The come along hitch is a great tool. Thanks for the great info. I'm going to take a screenshot of that and we are going to yeah. use that if that's all right with you, Lamar, because that is the type of success folks are looking for and they think it can only come if Steve's doing it and you just proved that anyone can do it. Of course, I don't mean that yeah. like, hey, if Lamar can do it, anyone can do it. What I mean is that, hey, if you're patient, you can do it. Uh, let's mm -hmm. see. Uh, LaDonna, I sent LaDonna, uh, uh, links to your driving DVD. She was asking about driving clinics. So I sent her to that. You are welcome. Uh, LaDonna, uh, Linda says, thank you about the emergency dismounting. I did have, uh, one from a horse when my neighbor lit off his barbecue next to the fence. That's how I broke my pelvis. Yeah, there you go. I'm sure there's, a, uh, there's a story right there. Um, there you are. let's see. Cowboy kid. Like, oh, 
excuse me. Oh, Cowboy Ken oh. is watching from Connecticut. Uh, let's see. Yolanda says, question about bits. And this will be our last question for the day. What do you think about the Santa Barbara spade bit or any other spade bit? So number one, what is a spade bit? Because I have no idea. And number two, what do you think about the Santa Barbara spade bit? And number three, what do you think about spade bits in general? Okay. I love spade bits. Love them. The only problem is it's a thing of the past. And most folks don't understand finesse and lightness. Okay. Spade bit means this. Here is the port of the bit. Yeah. Right here. And then the bars go off left and right. Okay. We're going to have to have a webinar on, we on bits. Okay. Now, here's what happens. The spade bit is like it says. It's shaped like the spade on a shovel. Okay. Or like, like a spade like you see in cards. All right. That part goes in. Here's the palette. That part goes in the mouth and is like this. Okay. Notice it's not touching. When we pick up on the reins, the spade touches nice. the top of the pallet. And it can be like a cathedral, they call it. It's way down deep in the pallet. And I mean them horses are broke when they do that. Now, this type of training, now listen to what it says, Santa Barbara. That's where the, 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 uh, the Spanish... Uh, 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 brought in their way of training and the cowboys started using it as well. Okay. And, and that Santa Barbara is where raining really became something. And they used the different bits. Now, now I've got a, quite a collection of bits. And when we have a webinar on bits, I'll talk about it. That'll be good. You have to be, I mean, let me tell you folks, I've only got a couple of spade bits because I am not that good with it. You can rip the pallet out of an animal's mouth easy with a spade bit, and especially a Santa Barbara. All right, now let's go on. It is meant to be light. You riding your animal, I usually say 80 20. I'm going to say you're riding your, on your legs at, at almost 52%. In other words, a small percentage you're going to be using your hands when you're riding a spade bit. I mean, that's how important it is. When you see a horse with a spade bit or a mule, I mean, their head is rolled over. They're just, they're just exotic. It just, it just majestically, you watch them round out their back and bring themselves up. It is incredible to see, but it is so rare to see as well. We used to have a program called Light Hands mm -hmm. that used to be in the Santa Barbara area. And some of the top horsemen in the nation would be there to go and demonstrate horse training. I mean, these guys were good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was, a, there was a mule guy there, too. Uh, anyway, that mule guy was there. And anyway, that's another story. So and that really. But here's the thing, folks is when you get to that level, it is way above me, way above me. That is, I mean, that is to have an animal that incredible takes a lot of talent. Yeah. And a spade bit is the end result of that talent. There you go. Yolanda. I think, I think we knocked her socks off because she wrote back, you love spade bits? Three question marks, she added, Steve. Three question Absolutely. marks. I think we I think we knocked her flat out of her seat. She is uh, she is beside herself. As a matter of fact, mm. talking about uh, doing a webinar on uh, bits, we do need to do that. Our next one is all about spurs. Folks, I just put yes. a link in the comments section. You can sign up. We're all done here for today. That was our last question for the day. Um, so if you want to click that link in the comment section, I just placed it there. You can go register. It's absolutely free. And we're going to talk about how to use spurs with mules and donkeys. It's that simple. 
we're, we're just going to talk about how you should be thinking about Spurs, um, how you should be using Spurs. Steve will uh, bust out some of his different Spurs. You may have seen some of them in past episodes, but uh, the difference between the webinars that we run and these Wednesday conversations is these Wednesday conversations are all driven by you. Everything you need to know, everything you want to know, that is what we talk about on these Wednesday conversations. These webinars, which are taking place on Thursday nights, so this will be 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, which would be uh, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. It'll be a, a few hours later back there in the Eastern and the Central. Uh, this is about Steve getting information that he needs to talk about that he feels like, hey, We've got to get this out there so after I'm gone, it can still live on the YouTube and people can find it and they can they can uh, make their decisions knowing that they have all the information. So join us. It's going to be next Thursday night. It's absolutely free. Uh, and Steve is going to share his thoughts on Spurs. And um, if you enjoy these and you really feel like you walk away with a lot, uh, you're really going to enjoy uh, hanging out with us for a webinar. There's plenty of folks here who are still watching with us this afternoon. We've gone a little bit over, but they're still watching with us. And they will tell you firsthand that the webinars are incredibly informative because um, Steve gets an entire uh, 40, 45 minutes to talk about one specific topic. We talk about a wide range of topics here, uh, but we just wind them up we get a whole bunch of coffee inside of him. We say, we give him a piece of paper. We say, talk about this. And then we just let him go. And we watch, <laughs> and we just watch him go for 45 minutes. And then at the end, we have time to answer some questions about Spurs. So go get, uh, go get signed up. I'll put the link in here one more time. We've got nothing else to talk about. That is it for today. So you can go ahead. You can click out. You can go get registered. Steve, no, anything wait. you want to say before people click out? Yeah. I'm going to have a donkey right here in the living room. Now, you all are seeing my ranch in the back, but I'm actually in my living room. Now, picture this. Thursday, when you come to the webinar to see the deal about spurs, you're going to see Strawberry the donkey standing right here in my living room. Wow. Strawberry the donkey. Now, if you all really want to see something, Wait till you see strawberry in my living room. All Woo! right. Steve is Steve is putting it out there. He's making some commitments. Now y'all gotta show up and you gotta hold it, hold him to it and say, I wanna see these strawberry right here. I wanna see yep. the strawberry. That's it, folks. Thank you for spending some time with us. Click that link in the comment section. You have caught everything here today. There is nothing left. For you to see other than your mouse hover over that link, click, open up, register, and you have just completed an amazing Wednesday. The best Wednesday, October 28th of your entire life. Who said Entire. 2020 was a loss? Not us. We, think, we, think, we, we just Jess, had an awesome bye. clinic. Jess, Jess, Jess. 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 Jess, just say bye. There, say bye, Jess. Say bye, Jess. There, oh, there he is. He is the disappearing and reappearing dog. Oh, look at that. Jess. Hey, Jess. Hey, Jess. All right, guys. We'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>